The Christiansborg Archaeological Heritage Project studies the history and the legacies of the transatlantic slave trade. One day, Rachel Amma Essa Engman was having tea with her aunt, when out of the blue her aunt said, Go to Christiansborg Castle and see your family name inscribed on the castle wall. Engman was confused, so the very next day she went to the castle, and sure enough, there it was. But how could that be? She had always been told that her ancestor, Carl Gustav Engman, was a Danish missionary. So she decided to travel to Copenhagen in Denmark to investigate further in the Danish National Archives. There she discovered that her great-great-great-great-great-grandfather was indeed a governor at Christiansborg Castle from 1752 to 1757. He married Ashiokai, a Gar chief's daughter. Engman, a Ghanaian professor of critical heritage, was in fact the direct descendant of a Danish slave trader and his African wife. Digging through the archives, she found numerous Danish Gar names, names of families that she knew, living in the Osu district that surrounds the castle today. She realized that their Danish ancestors were also associated with the Danish transatlantic slave trade. So Engman decided that this was an opportunity for an archaeological excavation project in which she could collaborate with these other direct descendants of relationships between Danish men and Gar women, for they are often absent in the written record. The Christiansborg Archaeological Heritage Project was born. Christiansborg Castle a UNESCO World Heritage Site is a former 17th century Danish trading post, British colonial seat of government, and after independence, office of the President of the Republic of Ghana. Today, it's known locally simply as Osu Castle. At the castle, gold, ivory and captive Africans were exchanged by African traders for guns, ammunition, liquor, cloth, iron tools, brass objects and glass beads supplied by the Danes. Captive Africans, men, women and children, were incarcerated in the cells of the castle. They were restrained by iron neck and ankle collars and chained to heavy wooden or iron blocks. Captives urinated and defecated where they stood, sat or slept, and sometimes they died there. Approximately 100,000 to 126,000 captive Africans were loaded onto slave ships and transported through the Middle Passage to the Danish West Indies, known today as the Virgin Islands, and enslaved on plantations. It would be hard to imagine the flourishing of the Danish transatlantic slave trade and slavery without Christiansborg Castle. Indeed, between 1688 and 1747, Danish coinage, circulating at that time, depicted the castle's image and the inscription, Christiansborg. The Danes collaborated with the Gar people. Danish men often married or cohabited with Gar women, and these Euro-African families formed prominent cosmopolitan communities participating actively in commerce, exploiting their African and European identities, knowledge, ancestry and connections to commercial advantage, including the transatlantic slave trade. Today, the direct descendants of these Danish Gar families continue to live close to the castle. These descendants form part of the archaeological excavation team at the castle. The project draws from various sources, it includes artifacts from the archaeological excavations, as well as texts, oral histories passed down through the generations of descendant families, and ethnography. An archaeology for, with and by direct descendants. They call their work auto-archaeology. The team has excavated an extensive settlement, a village that dates back to the transatlantic slave trade. They have discovered the foundations and walls of houses, including a kitchen.
they have retrieved a large artifact collection of European glassware, European and Chinese ceramics, local pottery, and African trade beads produced in Italy and Holland. They've also recovered African, Dutch, English, German, and Danish clay smoking pipes. Other small finds include a writing slate, seeds, metals, cowrie and other shells. Assisted by local fishermen, they excavated a cannon fallen from the castle above and buried in a sandy beach. A tunnel led to the nearby Richterhaus, owned by a Danish gar merchant from which captive Africans were forced into the castle and onto the slave ships. At Christiansborg Castle, the stories that they unearth are their stories. As direct descendants of Euro-African slave traders, the narratives and the histories they reconstruct shed light on little-known episodes in the history and afterlives of the transatlantic slave trade. The Christiansborg Archaeological Heritage Project is rewriting history.